Hey everyone, if you're looking for a STEM activity on electronic integrated circuits, this is the video you're going to want to watch. This is number five in a multi-part series for the Snaptricity Arcade STEM Kit. If you've been watching the last four lessons, you know that we've been building up to this moment where we're going to put everything together and build one integrated circuit. All right, guys, welcome back to our last lesson. This is lesson number five of the Snaptricity Arcade STEM Kit. This is our final project where we're going to put everything together into one integrated circuit. This is what we've been working up towards through lessons one, two, three, and four. And if you haven't seen those, please go back into the playlist and review those lessons prior to getting to this last final project. So if you notice on this side here, uh, we have our switches, we have our NPN and PNP transistors. We have the electronic switch that we used in uh, lesson number four for our game selectors. And we have our diodes. We have our red light, green light, and our reversible yellow red. Um, along the top here, we've got our speaker to get some sound, our disco ball motor and the disco ball um, plastic set, the LED microcontroller, internal computer we talked about in the last episode, and our LED fan, along with all the extra wires and components that we need on this side. Now, on this project, what I want to do is I want to start with the placement levels, all right, because there's a lot going on in this circuit. So I want to make this as easy as possible. I've talked about this before where each um, component, there are layers to the circuit, and those are indicated by the black numbers along the edges of each component. So in this lesson, this project, we're gonna start with all the layer one modules. So if I've already got my battery pack in place. This is a layer one. The next one I wanna do, and I kinda of start from biggest to smallest, but you can do it however you want, um, is I'm gonna put this, the microcontroller in place. And again, if you notice on the board, we have numbers and letters, kinda of like coordinates. So we wanna make sure we're setting these up the way they're designed on the schematic uh, that you can see here uh, from the book. That helps us to make sure that everything is laid out and we have the right number of uh, connectors and snaps to make sure everything works correctly. We're gonna go to the next one down below here. I'm going to grab my disco motor and I'm gonna put that in place. And if you notice, it's gonna come right along number seven here uh, down to the bottom. Oh, I'm going to spin it around this way. All right, then from those two modules, I'm going to go to my speaker, which is going to go on this side. If you see, I have F, then three. We're going to put that right along the edge. This is going to make it a lot easier to set things up as we go forward and make sure it's working right the first time. All right, next, I'm going to go to my diode. So I have a... Um, this is my yellow red um, flip flop diode here. So I'm gonna put that in the number nine area right there. I think the last thing here is my LED fan. That is going to be positioned this direction like so. So we're gonna put our wires in place now. Starting with the battery pack, uh, we are gonna use uh, a number two on a level two. So these are level two components. So I'm going to put that one in place, followed by another layer two, which is going to go over here. Again, you can, you can notice the level numbers are listed on the diagram or the schematic. I'm going to take a, uh, another layer two, which I missed here, a level two, and I need to put this uh, on this side right here because we're going to put some components on top of that here in, uh, in, in a short minute. So I'm going to grab a number four. And this is gonna go down towards the bottom a bit. So if I kind of look at my numbers here, um, I'm gonna be down right around the D mark here, I believe. And from there, uh, let's see, whatever, what other layer ones do we have? Oh, we have a number five layer one. So this is gonna go in line 
And, oh, we have a riser. We gotta put this in here. This is a layer one. Uh, this is gonna go right here on the corner of D and one, right there. All right, so our next one, a layer two, is a little connector right here. We're gonna make sure those two components are in place. And it looks like we need some number threes here. So we're gonna put this one, this is kind of tricky to get to. And we gotta make sure these line up correctly because when we put the other components on board, we wanna make sure that they line up to the proper pins. Looks like we have another number three, that's a layer or a level two, which is gonna go across the input outputs of our microcontroller. All right, but this one's gonna be a little different because um, we're gonna have um, another set here, another part to put in place. And we're gonna go ahead and do that right now since we're here. I'm gonna put that riser underneath first, which is a layer two. And then this actually has to be a layer three because we need to put our first PNP transistor in place. And that, my friends, is going to go right across here. So if you notice, that is a layer two. This is a layer three. We had a little number one in there for a riser, and now we can connect this layer three connector to our base of our transistor. So remember, we have the collector, the emitter, and the base. And this is gonna act as an amplifier for the speaker right here. All right, next we're gonna go move over to this side of the module of the integrated circuit, and we're gonna put our selector and our two diodes in place. All right, so the selector is a, a level two, so we're gonna put that in here. And again, it's these are our inputs on the microcontroller, which are going to receive input from the buttons that we select. So we're gonna put that in place there. We are going to take our green LED, which is also a level two, and put that across those two terminals right here. And then we are gonna take our red LED and we're gonna put that in place across these here. Again, if you remember, uh, electrons flow only one direction across the diode, so we gotta make sure those are in the proper order. Uh, with the arrows facing the direction of the current. All right, we have an anode and a cathode on a, on a, di on a diode. <laughs> so again, that is important um, to make sure they're in the right position, unless you're putting in a reversible diode, in which case, depends on which color you wanna have happen there. So next, we're gonna move on to the disco ball. For that, we're going to use the NPN transistor uh, to put that in place. This is a layer two, a level two device. And again, we want to make sure it's connecting the right parts or the right terminals. So underneath, you can see um, there's, a, there's an open device there. There's no spot for that. But there is a connection here for the base as well as the emitter and collector. So those have to be put, uh, snapped into the right location there. Now, while we're on this circuit, on this side here, this part of the circuit, we're going to add... Um, some uh, conductors here so that we can apply power to the areas of this module, of this motor for the disco ball. Remember that if you go back to the other lessons, lesson four, lesson three, that some components have multiple input, inputs in order to activate additional functions of the module. So again, we're putting integrated circuits into and integrated circuits. There's a lot of different functionalities that we can activate by applying voltages to certain terminals. So in this case, we're coming from the collector side of this NPM transistor, all right, to this input over here of the disco motor, which is gonna allow uh, the sound to happen. And the other one here, we're going to add in place for the motor functionality. So I'm gonna go from that side there all right, down to this button here. And we're gonna take that all the way over to the supply power because we wanna make sure we always have power 
to this device right here, to this module. So we're going from the positive side of this battery pack to the power input of the disco motor. So now that configuration is ready to go. All right, moving over to the final side of this circuit, we're gonna finish the power portion of the power supply portion of this. Um, I forgot that I need to put in a number three snap, all right, uh, between those areas so that I have power going through there. Now I need to add the switches. So on the switch side, we have a slider switch and a push button switch. If you don't know the difference, I'm gonna tell you. If you haven't looked at some of the other videos, um, but what we have here is a slider switch, which is basically a, a solid on or solid off. So I'm gonna make the connection internally and it's going to turn everything on for us as a main switch. The momentary switch or the push button switch is designed so that when you push it, it activates. When you release it, it deactivates. So that's why we call it a momentary switch. Uh, so it's only on for a moment while you are holding the button down. All right, so we have some final connections we have to make with our jumper wires. Um, they are going to start from the positive side of this diode down to, the, to this side of the speaker. And we're gonna take a red wire and we're gonna go from the input or the power side of these selector buttons all the way over to the positive or output side of the LED microcontroller. Okay, wow. Let's see, well, let's see, we check all our circuits. We, let's go back and troubleshoot some things here just to make sure um, we've got all our the connectors properly pushed down. We have our jumper wires in place. I always like to go back and just do a final run through to make sure everything's connected properly. Okay, everyone, this is the moment of truth we've been waiting for. Everything is ready to go. So we're gonna flip the switch on this one. And we have launch. So let's kind of recap what we did here. The last four lessons we have gone through individual circuits. So why is this important? Well, everything we use electronic uh, from our cars to our games to uh, switches in our houses are modular. They're, they all have integrated circuits built into them. But as we're seeing here, one power supply is providing energy and electrons to multiple integrated circuits in one project. I'm gonna go ahead and do the selector on this here and I'm gonna just kind of keep things moving. I'm gonna go to number three. As you can th see, things are still happening here. I'm gonna say go for launch on that little game there. It's gonna randomize the LEDs like we had in the other lessons. It's activating the disco ball effect. I'm still able to use my momentary switch. So as you can see, there's integration, but yet separation. So things are working together, but they're all working independently. So this module's working independent of this versus this and this. So I hope you found this video engaging and educational for your STEM activities. If you did, please consider subscribing and click the playlist button so you can see all the videos that we've done on this series. My name is Steve, the host of Your Technology Coach. Thank you for watching.